Since its inception, Boeing has been synonymous with the greater Seattle area. Thanks to their robust history of cooperation with the state of Washington, it's nearly impossible to disassociate it from the Pacific Northwest. Not only that, but the area has long been the perfect backdrop to complement Boeing's stunning aircraft. With each new Boeing plane comes a breathtaking photo shoot, with Mount Rainier serving as the backdrop. So the strong bond between the two must be impossible to break, right? Well, maybe not. In recent months, Boeing's decided to move the entirety of 787 production out of their Everett hub in order to survive the COVID-19 crisis. And this move, which was once considered unthinkable, could mark the beginning of the end of this long and historic partnership. Let me explain. Hey folks, before getting into it, I just want to say a huge thank you for all the support you've shown in 2020. I literally started the year with 1,000 subscribers and now I'm somewhere in the ballpark of 49,000, which is wild. I run this channel entirely by myself, right? From writing the scripts to editing the videos, of course, presenting and then promoting them. You know, it, it, it brings me a lot of joy to see the work that I've been doing touch so many people. You know, I'd love to get to 50,000 subscribers before the end of the year. And when I do hit that milestone, I'm going to do a big giveaway. And I got more details on that coming soon. So if you haven't done so yet, go ahead, hit that subscribe button, hit that bell icon. And yeah, again, thanks so much for the great year. Now, Boeing first set up shop in Washington State way back in 1910. In that year, the company's founder, William E. Boeing, bought a boat manufacturing facility along the Duwamish River, which would later become their very first airplane factory. Over the course of the next several decades, thousands of workers flocked to the area in search of work, and before long, Boeing became integral to the region's economic success. The state of Washington quickly recognized this and worked to reinforce Boeing's growth. Specifically, they began to offer tax breaks in exchange for Boeing's commitment to help grow the regional economy. Boeing responded emphatically. In 1967, they started to build what would later become the world's largest building in Everett, a town just outside of Seattle. This new behemoth of a facility would act as the final assembly hub for nearly all of Boeing's commercial aircraft, and today turns out 747s, 767s, 777s, and 787s. Additionally, Boeing built a second factory in nearby Renton to assemble the workhorse 737. Over the years, Boeing and Seattle continued to publicly reaffirm their burgeoning love affair. For instance, during the 747-8 certification campaign, Boeing painted one of their test planes in a Seattle Seahawks-inspired livery. At the time, it would have seemed unfathomable for Boeing to ever leave its hometown. But behind the scenes, such a move was actually well underway. The relationship first began to fray in 2001, when Boeing officially relocated their corporate headquarters to Chicago. This decision was questioned from the start, as it would put physical distance between senior leadership and engineers. The concern was that this would disrupt communication between the bean counters and those in charge of design, which could have devastating effects. These concerns were amplified a decade later when Boeing made a decision that would tee up the 787's eventual move. By 2011, the 787 was in extremely high demand. In order to meet this demand, Boeing set out to build 10 a month, but its facilities around Seattle were not sufficient to accommodate that rate of production. Boeing had two options, expand the Everett final assembly line or build a whole new factory. Boeing chose the latter, but rather than building a new assembly line in Washington state, they did so in North Charleston, South Carolina. This new South Carolina plant would start off by building four Dreamliners a month, while the Everett factory would build six. Flash forward to today, and this split 787 production is no longer a reality. In 2021, all 787s will be built in South Carolina. And while this decision has upset many, the reasoning behind it is actually quite sound. Perhaps the most obvious driver behind the move is labor costs. 
On average, Boeing pays factory floor workers in South Carolina $24 an hour. In comparison, the same worker in Everett makes approximately $33 an hour. Even when factoring out differences in cost of living, there remains a wage disparity of 28%. This means that per unit production costs for 787s produced in Charleston are much lower than those in Everett, allowing Boeing to conserve funds during this time of industry weakness. Now, one of the key reasons that costs are so much higher in Everett is thanks to labor unions. For those unfamiliar with unions, they are organizations that protect the rights of workers. They help to negotiate labor contracts and ensure that workers work in a safe and comfortable environment, which is great for workers, but bad for penny-pinching employers. Now, unions have been a thorn in Boeing's side for the past several decades. Not only do they drive up labor costs, but they also have the ability to start labor strikes. Over the past 30 years, there have been four major work stoppages at Boeing due to strikes. The most recent was the machinist strike of 2008, and it was by far the most damaging. It lasted for eight weeks, with Boeing machinists seeking an increase in base pay. Throughout the duration of the strike, airplane production ground to a halt, which cost Boeing an estimated $100 million per day. By choosing to move 787 production to South Carolina, a state where unionization rates are nearly non-existent, Boeing can guard against the possibility of future work stoppages that labor unions often induce. A third but equally as important factor in Boeing's move is state-backed incentives, or rather the lack thereof. Again, Washington State provided massive tax breaks to Boeing back in the 60s, but those have long since expired. So, when Boeing made it public that they were looking to expand 787 production, South Carolina's legislature made a point to mimic those incentives. In 2009, they passed House Bill 3130, which provided large tax exemptions for companies who created at least 3,800 full-time jobs and invested $750 million in the state. While the bill did not name Boeing explicitly, it was largely designed to lure them in. When you take these three factors into account, Boeing's full-time move to South Carolina makes a lot of sense. But it should be noted that the move has been met with plenty of fair criticism. First, the move puts even more distance between Boeing engineers, executives, and factory workers, with each now based in three distant cities. Second, there have been rumblings that the working conditions at the South Carolina plant have proven to be suboptimal, and the lack of unions there exposes its workers to potential exploitation. Third, 787s that have rolled off the South Carolina line have experienced greater quality control issues than those built in Everett, and consolidation there might compromise aircraft safety and continue to erode trust in the Boeing brand. What's more, the move will have a real human toll in the Seattle area. While it's true that Boeing will continue to build 747s, 767s, 777Xs, and 737 Maxes in Washington, each of these programs face their own distinct challenges. The 747 is at the end of its life, with just a handful of orders remaining in its backlog. The 767 is also past its prime, and will continue seeing diminished orders in the coming years. The 777X, while a new aircraft, hasn't sold very well, and has a dicey future in a post-COVID world. And the 737 MAX, despite having a strong backlog, has already developed a notorious reputation that will incentivize Boeing to phase it out as soon as they can. With the outlook for each of these programs looking bleak, it's likely that Boeing's Seattle-based workforce will continue to experience layoffs in the coming years. For any longtime Boeing fan, this is a sad end to a long and prosperous partnership. Now, don't get me wrong, Boeing's presence in Seattle isn't going to disappear overnight. But it's clear that this mecca of commercial aviation has seen its best days go by. All we can do now is hope that the move to South Carolina will be enough to keep Boeing's head above water. Because as sad as Boeing's departure from the Pacific Northwest might be, an even sadder reality would be one in which Boeing doesn't survive the pandemic at all. And I'm sure that none of us here want that to happen. Have you guys ever been to Boeing's Everett factory before? If so, sound off down in the comments.
My first trip there was back in November of 2018, and it was a really inspiring experience. So inspiring, in fact, that upon returning home, I started doing research on how to start a YouTube channel. And here we are. Thank you so much to my patrons for helping to make this video possible. If you want to join the Patreon community and help this channel to grow, check out this link right here. And as always, if you learned something new today, leave a like and subscribe to keep learning. And until I see you again, don't forget to look up.